Ronnie Gilchrist, Snickle Poo and the Babysitter, WGKG, Chicago, February 4th, 1953. Dear Mr. Carraway, the strangest thing. I got a letter from Senator McCarthy's committee asking me to come and testify. I, I can't imagine what they think I can help them with, though of course I'm, I'll help in any way I can. Do you know Senator McCarthy? Congratulations again on your new job. Mr. Taylor has been wonderful in giving me advice about the show, but I keep reminding myself of what you said about not changing a thing. Well, you know me, the eternal worrywart. If I were in Washington, I'd probably be tinkering with the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Your friend, Ronnie Gilchrist. Uh, please uh, state your name for the record. Veronica Edith Gilchrist. But that's not the name you use, is it? People call me Ronnie. People call you? <laughs> Everybody does. My parents, my friends. It's a nickname. Come on, Miss Gilbert. Isn't it a fact? Isn't it a fact that you hide behind this alias as if, if you have been deliberately trying to disguise your true identity? <laughs> no, I just Ronnie. Ronnie seems friendlier. Friendlier? Are you telling this committee that you desire to be friendly? <laughs> yes, of course. Friendly as in a friendly witness for the committee, or friendly as in comrade? <laughs> 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 Never mind. I, uh, I, I think we can all figure out the answer. Uh, Miss Gilbert, uh, Miss so-called Ronnie Gilbert, I hand you this piece of paper and ask you to read the words on it. <clears throat> I was at Franklin's Roosevelt's side just a while before he died. He said, one world must come out of World War II. Yankee, Russian, white, or tan, Lord, a man is just a man. We're all brothers, and we're only passing through it. Now I understand. You understand? You understand this dirty, communistic, unpatriotic piece of red garbage? Well, that's very interesting, Ronnie, because most Americans, most real Americans, would not understand such a piece of verminous treason. No, I meant I, I understand how you got confused. This is a song by the Weavers. Passing through. The, the girl in the weavers is Ronnie Gilbert. I'm Ronnie Gilchrist. Are you trying to tell this committee that you don't know the words to this song? Yes, uh, we used to sing it at camp. We we never sang that verse though. What are what are some of the verses you did sing at this indoctrination camp? <laughs> It was a Girl Scout camp. Miss Gilbert. Gilchrist. Miss Gilbert. What are the names of your pals in this so-called singing group, the Weavers? <laughs> their, their names? Is there some reason why you don't want to tell us their names? No, of, of course not. I, I want to help the committee, but I, I'm not... You say you want to help the committee, but you refuse to give us their name. <laughs> no, I, I... Let's see, there's, um... Pete Seeger. The well-known communist. And, uh, Lee Hayes. The well-known communist. And Ronnie Gilbert, but um, I can't remember the other one. Come on now, Ronnie. I... Come on, you're doing fine. This committee wants to believe you. This committee is here to help you and all patriotic Americans. We know there are a lot of fellow travelers like you who have seen the light and are now ready to defend America? What about you, Ronnie? Do you want to help defend America? Yes, yes. Yes what? I'm a good American. I, I hate the communists. I, I know somebody in President Eisenhower's administration. Who would this be, Miss Gilbert? Mr. Nicholas Carraway. He's in the State Department. Request a subpoena be issued in the name of Mr. Nicholas Carraway. A New York Journal American exclusive by Dorothy Kilgallen, February 22, 1953. State Department Pinko Little Red Thrush in Conspiracy. 
This reporter has learned of a secret correspondence between Little Red Thrush, Ronnie Gilbert, and Nicholas Carraway, the State Department commie, recently unmasked by the McCarthy Committee. We have obtained a copy of a letter in which the thrush tells Pinko Nico, if I were in Washington, I'd probably be tinkering with the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> From the desk of John Foster Dulles, February 23rd, 1953. Mr. Carraway, I expect your letter of resignation on my desk by 5 p.m. today. Aboard the Ile de France, cable to Jacob Barnes, Paris Herald Tribune, 3353. Arriving Paris Thursday under cloud, stop. If still speaking to Pariah, contact Hotel George Sank, Caraway. <laughs>